Welcome to Sick Baggers YouTube channel. I'm Steve. A uh, little discouraged this week. Uh, if you've been following the Cholo build that we've been doing on our channel, you'll know that we're already way past this part. And somehow we're back to this part. And uh, I'm gonna explain this week so we don't really have a whole lot of time I'm actually shooting this before we leave for Daytona and I don't have a ton of time to do a big install, but we've been test fitting Advan black parts. And when I say parts, I mean an entire wall of parts over there that we've been test fitting on the soft tail and on the bagger model. So I've been a little bit swamped and I apologize that I don't have a really good install video for you all this week, um, but I am going to explain this. So when I get back from Daytona, I don't have to re-explain why all of this is going on or, or maybe the changes you'll see in the bike when we start to do the handlebar install. Um, so in the time crunch to get ready for Daytona, we've had to get the bagger ready. It's already polished up, cleaned up, ready to go on the toy hauler and uh, we started test fitting a uh, stretched rear fender for Advan Black that had color match to match the bike back here. We got it on. Everything went super smooth with the fender. There's a few adjustments that we want to make and I'll, I'll show you the fender here in just a little bit. But in doing that, I reminded myself of something that I noticed when I actually put the DNA wheels on the bike the first time. Um, even with the stock fender, I noticed it, but with this fender, it seemed to for some reason stick out a little bit more to me. Um, but the rear wheel on here has to come off these uh we did a whole video on the dna wheels this whole thing has to come off the bike and i have to ship it back to dna and uh, i noticed it that day but i didn't put a whole lot of thought into it but after i spent a ton of time back here doing the fender i really noticed it and then once i really noticed it i couldn't unnotice it and i'm glad that i kind of stuck with it and tried to figure it out we got the rear wheel all lined up everything fits perfectly uh the brake rotor is inside the caliper the belt is dead nuts on uh, we got everything tightened up and the wheel and tire itself is offset to the left um, and it's not just a little bit, it's like a half of an inch. So I know a lot of the soft tail models out there have a rear offset to them, but it's almost every one I've ever seen is offset slightly to the right, just, just a little bit. Um, and this one is a half of an inch offset to the left. I loosened everything, make sure double checked all my work, which the rear wheel install is super easy to do. There's not really a lot you can screw up and you're going to know if you screwed up on installing it. Like if you put the wrong spacer in or you put the spacer on the wrong side, stuff isn't other stuff is not going to line up. If I was to use the wrong spacer or the spacer on the other side, my caliper wouldn't line up with my rotor. My belt wouldn't line up with my pulley everything wouldn't spin freely this spins nice my rotor on this side is not dragging in my caliper and those are brand new rear brake pads we did a video on those too so if everything wasn't lined up correctly i would hear dragging on the rotor or my belt over on this side would be trying to jump off the pulley um, and it's just not doing that everything is where it's supposed to be and somehow when i have the fender on here i can barely get my fingers between the tire and the fender on the left side and on the right side i can stick my whole hand in there and actually smack the top of the tire so that told me something was off I, I finally got a hold of one of the techs at dna and it was really just a simple mistake when they build these tires and i'm not a spoke guy i don't know a ton about spokes i would never in my life ever try to true a spoked wheel i've never been trained in it i don't know how to do it i wouldn't tackle it that's above my pay grade so talked to him and it was explained to me that when they're building these wheels they can be adjusted so like the tire still stays straight straight you know with the line of the bike but it can be offset slightly to the left or to the right depending on the model uh, or, or depending on what it needs uh, my bike obviously does not need a half inch offset to the left so um, that's coming super super close to that fender um, you know the only movement you have in the back of your bike is up and down there's no side to side so i wasn't super worried about it hitting the fender but i just knew something wasn't right it shouldn't be that far forced over to the left so um, after going up to harley davidson and finding a couple of soft tails up there some deluxes and some heritages i had on the floor at our local harley and sticking my fingers in there there is just a 
tad offset to the right not a half inch to the left so i was correct i wasn't absolutely crazy in thinking that something was wrong and i'm glad that i got it figured out and i'm glad the guy at dna uh, walked me through and explained it to me which makes absolute sense it was just a mess up no big deal they're actually sending me a shipping label I'm gonna box this back up with the rotor and the pulley on it because remember when we did this video the rotor and the pulley those are one-time bolts and I purchased chrome ones to put back on here so at first I thought man I got to pull those brand new bolts so I'm out the cost of the bolts I may be out the cost of shipping but DNA is taking care of all of it they're they're doing me a solid um, I get to take the wheel off which is what we're gonna do today we're gonna pack it back up in the box with the pulley and the rotor on it we're going to send it back to them they're going to retrue it and then they're going to send it back to us at no cost and then we'll get it put back on the bike but to have a company step up to the plate and actually take care of the problem that's number one with me so i hope that that opinion doesn't change in the future i've done a ton of reviews on a ton of different companies and there's really only been one that kind of rubbed me the wrong way over the years and uh, really changed my tune about that company. So I hope DNA stays like that. Um, I haven't had any experience with DNA in the past, so I was a little worried when I called, as, as anybody would be, that they were gonna take care of the problem, but they are. So I'm grateful for that. Thank you, DNA, for that. But quickly, so, so this week's video, I'm not even sure how to even label this week's video, what to even name this thing, but um, today we're gonna be taking the Advan Black Fender, which I've already half built and uh, tested. We're gonna put it back on the bike. I'll bring the camera over here. We're just gonna speed that process up because this isn't really a whole uh, fender changing video. Um, so with the soft tail, it's super easy. It's just a few bolts, um, but we're gonna put it on here. I'm gonna show you that uh, offset on the left and the right. And then I'm gonna just button up a few other things today. Um, we've got the fuel tank back on and I never put my braided hose back under here. And it's just a braided that cross under line video that I did that shows you how to take that cross under line off and drain your tank. Um, we're putting a braided hose back on there, a chrome braided hose. Um, I didn't really think that that justified a whole install video um if you've got the tank drained and you want to replace that rubber line with a nice braided one this is how you do it so we're going to bring the camera over here and like i said we'll speed this part up but we're going to get the rear fender put back on here we're going to look at that and you can have a kind of a look at the new uh, cholo style fender from advan black tell me what your thoughts are on that thing i absolutely love it we've already talked about a few different changes that we're going to be doing with the fender to give the customers um, a couple of more options as far as license plate placement um, tail light whichever tail light you want to run if you want to run your stock license plate frame versus the french stand one that we have um, so we've already got those changes in the works because we tested this last week and that's when i noticed all this mess back here so um, we're just going to put the fender on i'm going to tighten up a few things on the bike and then we're pretty well going to be done out here for the rest of the week so if you just want to kick back from here grab yourself a drink and follow along i'm going to speed this video up and i'll see you at the end of the video with my final thoughts So we got the rear fender installed and as you can see here barely get my fingers in there we go to this side put my whole hand in there smack the top of the tire so that's what we mean by the half inch offset to the left so, and of course this is the prototype fender from Advan black we do have a two up slim uh, solo seats a Badlander actually from Harley Davidson it's going to be coming for the seat I have to do a two up on this bike this fender comes it's not going to have the hole in the back for the two up seat but 
on the inside of this fender it will be marked for you to drill and you can just simply pop out your nut and clip off of your stock fender and put it right back in here super easy to do and when we're done with the prototype fenders and we get to a final product you know of course i will do an install video over on the advan black uh, youtube channel as well and we'll actually do all that stuff so you can uh, follow along and see how that's done so looking at the back of the bike you've got this uh, fisheye oval tail light and the bullet blinkers the small aftermarket bullet blinkers the stretched rear fender and of course the frenched in curve license plate this part of the bike we will actually do some work on that way it gives you options whether or not you want to run this system or if you want to run something else so just stay tuned for that but i wanted to give you a little peek of the new cholo fender from advan black that'll be coming out very soon so i just threw the old stalker on here took the brake caliper and the abs sensor and pulled it up and wired it off this side over here we're just going to leave the belt hang because i do have to have this rollable this has to come off the lift when we get back so we've got a road glide going on here for an interfering swap for the advan black channel pretty much right after we get back from daytona so this has to roll this is going to be a little wanky on here because you don't have the proper spacers and stuff in here but it'll be just fine to roll off here get it out of the way and push it back up on the lift but it's getting towards the end of the day and after about 50 uh, admin black phone calls today and then trying to figure out this whole mess and get that one ready to ship it, it's just the end of the day for me so like i said i do apologize for not having a big install video for you like i said i, I knew it was going to be a quick video but i just kind of wanted to get everybody up to date and kind of on the same page on the cholo build and hopefully it won't take too long to get the wheel back from dna that would be pretty cool to be able to get that back on here. Listen, I hope you had a great weekend. Thanks for hanging in here to the end of this kind of just lame video. Sorry, didn't have a whole lot for you this week. But uh, I hope to see you in the next video. And hopefully I got to meet some of you down in Daytona. So if you're watching this and you got to meet us down in Daytona, hell yeah. Appreciate all of you. I'm going to get out of here and get this wheel shipped off. I hope to see you in the next video. But until then, as always, be safe. Keep your knees in the breeze.